how long? So how many minutes do, do I have? It's uh, 7.23 here in Bali. How much time do I have? Um, Hello? It's, yeah, it's totally uh, up to you, Mr. Frankie. So, uh, yeah, it's All like... Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Uh, how, how many participants do we have today? Here uh, on at screen? the moment, we have one, two, three, four, five, six participants at the moment. All right. Okay, so shall I just start? Is it okay? Yes, yes, please. Can please I just start. start? Uh, I also, yes, I started the recording. Okay. Oh, we have now eight participants. I started the recording, so it will be possible also right. for others to do later. So before, before you start recording, Paul, may I know where are those participants from? Uh, sure, we have a few participants from Nigeria. Okay. We have uh, one participant from uh, Belarus. We have also one from participant. Where? Belarus, Białoruś. Uh, I don't know how to say it properly in English, so maybe Alex, <laughs> you can actually tell this. This is also Eastern Europe. This is, uh, we are neighborhoods. Oh, okay. Between well, Russia and Poland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but, but we have, it was like, what, we threw slant on German. <laughs> don't know how to say okay. it in Belarus. Right. Uh, so we have participants from, of course, Poland, from Nigeria, and where else? German, Germany, Italy, Italy. Okay, where else? Three. We have six Tunisia. participants. Tunisia, excellent. So, where else? We have two more, right? Two more participants oh, my, from where? I think we have one from India. India, all right, cool. Nice. So one more. This is nice. This is quite a global, you know, escape. There, there, there is one more participant, right? As far as I understood, because you have six participants, right? Yeah, it's also um, yeah. good. We have two from Nigeria. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so very much for having me. It's really uh, an honor for me to be able to speak to all of you. And although only like you're only six of you, but you are basically representing like the entire, you know, uh, uh, continents, which I live to. So this is the, the subject is about, uh, and I, I believe all of you are musicians, right? We can do interactive, you know. So please uh, yeah, answer um, my I question mean, if I... I... I'm, for example, not a professional musician, but I like making beats. So everything that I know, I learn by myself. I don't have any degree okay. in music. No, no, don't worry. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting for me to, to learn something new. But we have some awesome. other folks in our community which are professional musicians. For example, awesome. uh, South Music, Cot Music, which is actually, yeah, is like a professional full-time music engineer. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, the, well, I don't know. The, I believe I will be, you know, in the same boat like you are. Uh, I learn a lot of, I, I learn music from all over the world. But the purpose uh, why I learned, you know, what so-called world music from across the the continents, you know, all continents is basically in addition to get some knowledge, but I I also interested in using them as a part of my musical expression. So this is uh, maybe uh, what uh, you want to do because uh, this is basically music very specific uh, uh, located in Indonesia, and Indonesia is the largest archipelago in the world. So that's why I use the title "Music of the Archipelago." So, uh, as you might know, Indonesia consists of uh, seventeen thousand one seven zero 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 thousands of small islands, and the largest. Uh, of them are like five islands, like uh, you see in the archipelago. 
So this is uh, an island of Suma Sumatra on the very far left. And then uh, Borneo, it's a uh, um, there is part of uh, part small part of Borneo also belong to Malaysia. Uh, and then we have Java. When we have uh, uh, it's, it's here is a lesser Sunda Islands, basically the eastern part of Indonesia. And then we have two others, uh, Sulawesi, and then Papua. We share also Papua with uh, New Guinea. So this is a really large uh, archipelago. And it's been, you know, the, the oldest civilizations uh, that uh, discovered in our country dated back to 45,000 years ago. Here, uh, let me show you. So this is, uh, we, 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 we know this from the cave paint, painting inside the, uh, I mean, the painting inside the cave. So uh, it's um, the, 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 the scientific research uh, indicate that this uh, painting maybe has been around for 40, 40 to 40, 45,000 years ago. Okay, so this we consider this as like the beginning of our uh, Indonesian civilization. Now here, if you see, I've been to this cave before. Uh, this cave is uh, located in South Sulawesi. Uh, South Sulawesi. Uh, that's, you, you can see that's a it's a, 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 a like a print making of a, our of a hand, so it's it's attached to the, the wall of the cave, and so there are several others, and also there's also pictures later on I'll show you, of uh, uh, basically boards you know with colors already. This this is this uh, visual uh, dated 40, 40 to forty five years ago, so this can be considered like the beginning. Uh, of Indonesian civilization that we known so far, you know, okay. And uh, now uh, the best way to understand Indonesian music is basically uh, uh, to understand the layers of Indonesian music because uh, Indonesian Indonesian Indonesia, the archipelago is a crossroad of civilization since thousands years ago. So there are people coming to this archipelago, bringing their uh, musical resources, you know, and they, like, you know, they are, uh, what do you call that? They, they stay together and they make layers. You know, so you can still see the oldest layers, living music, uh, basically living music culture. It's still basically very much practic uh, practiced by the peoples there. I will show you, I'm going to show you some movie that, uh, that I made myself. But a little bit of this. So the the first uh, stratum I said is uh, is a megalithic stratum. It dated you know back to fifteen thousand years uh, before Christ uh, before Christ. So the Kator, I'm using this uh, uh, is a category that we normally learn in the field of ethnomusicology. First, of course, a vocal, you know, uh, and then the second is uh, it's, it's together. Basically, it's called idiophone. Idiophone is uh, basically uh, the a category of instrument that that can make can produce a sound without using reso resonator, you know, without any resonance. So it's just basically like a stone. Basically, stone can produce uh, sound just like that. You don't need any any resonator or something like that. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the, the oldest instrument that we found here in Indonesia. It's called stone chimes. Like in a stone with with uh, with uh, with uh, different tones, yeah, and like a scale, something like that. And the location we found this in uh, in West uh, first West Java is called Gunung Padang Temple. Uh, and I will show you some movie. And also, this is a Gunung Padang Temple. It's uh, dated back around fifteen to twenty five years ago 25000 years ago so we did some research on on this uh, site this is a sacred site basically and this stone uh, is is similar to like a like a musical instrument so there is one stone here it's not here exactly that people used to play some sort of music there you know and uh, and and but uh, of course, we cannot hear the original music of that stone chime for sure because it's too old. But 
uh, there is a similar uh, musical uh, expression along the same uh, ages and is in the focal uh, in the focal form then the uh, the music you can still find has been practicing uh, by the uh, Toraja tribe exactly in the same location in the South Sulawesi. This is this is uh, this is the movie a movie that I I, I we made uh, of uh, about the what I call idiophonic culture of Minahasa. Indonesia is the largest archipelago in the world. Among the five largest islands Sulawesi or Celebes is the oldest one. In this island we can still find the oldest layer of megalithic culture in form of cave paintings in Maros, South Sulawesi that have been around for at least 40,000 years. Yet the very much alive megalithic culture can be discovered in the highland of Toraja, South Sulawesi in the form of an archaic musical form called Manimbong and Madongbong. At the very far north of Sulawesi, we find another archaic music culture based on stone and wooden musical instruments. Surrounded by the mountain, valley, lake and dense rainforest, for the past thousand years the people of Lembin has developed a very unique idiophonic music culture. Nah, kayu wanderan ini, uh, kayu yang berserat lurus, yang uh, yang berdentang sangat sangat baik. Kayu wanderan ini awalnya dipakai oleh orang-orang tua-tua jika mengumpulkan sebagai tanda pengumuman mereka memakai kayu wanderan. The ancestors of Lembing people created three wooden sticks called kolintong tekan to be used for instruments their narrative ritual called tetambakan. First transformation of Kolin Tong Tekken into pure musical instruments happened when Lembin ancestors a long time ago turned three Kolin Tong Tekken into three keys of wooden xylophone called Kolin Tong Tiga Baila or three keys Kolin Tong. Until today, the Lembin people, especially elders, still considers that the music of Kolin Tong Three Baila is a sacred music that cannot be played outside the ritual context. In the okay, uh, that 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 instrument uh, has been developed into what so called xylophone uh, today, and this is interesting because these xylophones are related to the xylophones in Africa, and uh, there was a research that uh, saying the origin of African uh, xylophone is from Indonesia, from Solat, South Sulawesi, exactly from that area. It, it 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 was brought by uh, the sailor in in Madagascar in the 16th 15th century to to Africa eastern part of Africa and then it spread out all over Africa uh, after that so that's interesting that's how it's related very interesting now uh, the the second stratum is what so called neolithic uh, stratum this uh, the, the this 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 stratum musical stratum dated back 5000 years uh, BC and the category it's called metallophone because five around that uh, five or seven thousand years ago, uh, Indonesians ancestor in Java Island managed to dis- discover managed to invent how to how to create what so called not gong out of metallurgy kind of uh, you know uh, technology. So they they learn the, the the metallurgy, but then from from the technique they managed to create. Uh, not in the gong. Gong before that era, normally like flat gong. There is no knob in that. So, but uh, but after after five thousand years BC, the Javanese ancestor managed to create a knob, and then uh, with the knob, the gong can produce tone, specific tone. From that uh, time on, they create what so called gong chimes. So they create several different kind of gong with different tones. 
Then it's become musical instrument. It's called gamelan. Some of you maybe have ever heard what's uh, gamelan music. Here I'm going to play you. This is this is the example of very old gamelan. This is what's so called the knob gong here. Uh, here this is the knob, yeah. And uh, with this knob, uh, the, the gong has can produce different set of tone. So it become a scale. It's called pent pentatonic scale. So this music uh, uh, has been around for around uh, for for five thousand years. I'm going to show you this uh, movie, uh, not the not the beginning, but later on. This is a sacred Balinese uh, gamelan uh, called uh, Gong Gede. <laughs> This is the song with it. Okay. Now, since that's that music uh, will only be played uh, in the in the in the ritual uh, context because it's sacred music. Uh, that's why Gong Day is very rare nowadays in Bali because they, you can only find uh, the, the the instrument, the ensemble, or the orchestra uh, in certain temples. Not all temples in Bali has that particular instrument. It's already became rare. Now, from here, uh, can you follow me? Can you still follow me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I can. All right, good. All right, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm not, I'm not going to open a question yet, but I'm going to continue until I'm done. Then we can do like, you know, Q&A session. Okay. Would that be okay? Now, the second stratum is when Islam came to uh, the archipelago. That uh, in the year 1200, uh, uh, year of 1200, Islam came to Sumatra first. And Islam, of course, they brought a musical instrument. And especially, of course, they brought several musical instruments, but especially what has become phenomen phenomenal in Indonesia is the, it's called uh, rebana. Rebana is basically a frame drum and uh, uh, the, the, the category of our organology in ethnomusically, we call it membrano food. It's made of membrane. And the most spectacular ones of this uh, uh, music came from Aceh. Aceh is uh, North Sumatra. And this is the first uh, Islamic kingdom was founded there in in in, in North Sumatra. I'm not going to play the the, the music uh, frame drum music now, but later you will listen to the, the frame drum music uh, later on at, at the end of the, my 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 presentation. So I'm going to move on. So basically, this is the layer, the Islamic layer. Uh, this is the frame drum, a very huge frame drum. Okay, and this is the, the the mosque in in the old mosque in in Aceh. Okay, and this is the the Shia ritual in western part of Indonesia. It's called Tabui ritual. It's a drum ritual basically. So this is a drum drum or membranophone is uh, is very dominant here in the Islamic music. You, know, you can find it, uh, like in the Middle East also, and also the Central Asia. You can find frame drum music all over uh, that, that places okay now the 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 last stratum is actually of course uh uh the europeans uh music that came through colonialism you know this is uh the year the era is uh, 1600s you know when the portuguese first spanish but then spanish got divided by portuguese and portuguese came they brought a specific musical instrument to uh, you, where you can still find it. Uh, it's called Sasando in eastern part of Indonesia, in Flores, but also in Ambon. You know, Ambon is Malukas, uh, Malukas. So I'm going to give you a very interesting sample, show an interesting sample of the Portuguese music uh, in, in Malukas, in Ambon to be specific.
Okay, that's uh, basically music uh, origin from uh, from Portugal. You know, uh, as you have, if you have, if you you know, have you as you see, it's uh, like a guitar there, violins, you know, all kind of string instruments uh, mainly. And of course, uh, it, it, it's been indigenized uh, to become like our own like local indigenous music. You know, even the player maybe that they're, they're not uh, quite aware that or the origin of this musical uh, form. Which is very interesting. This, this not this kind of music. The European, European, European influence are very strong, of course, uh, through, during the colonial uh, era, because there are three hundred, uh, basically three hundred fifty years, Indonesia has been, you know, occupied by Dutch. You know, so the the, the main the main country that occupied Indonesia is uh, the Netherlands. I mean, Dutch uh, people basically. So they brought through Dutch people. They brought a lot of European musical tradition, including the classical musical tradition. So now what uh, you can see in Indonesia is basically the blending of different sort of Indonesian, uh, I mean, different sort of global music culture. The main influence uh, in Indonesian music, as, uh, as I mentioned, it's created layers by layers of musical form. But then at the end of, uh, at the, end of the colonial era, All this musical uh, form, all this musical genre has been, you know, blended together, and uh, and, and many musicians from different parts of Indonesia took took it as uh, their own uh, musical vocabulary and create something new out of it, you know, based on their own preference and also, of course, their own musical background. This is what makes Indonesian music to become very vibrant today, you know, very dynamic, and you can see different sort of musical expression here, like literally like thousand of them because each musician uh, tried to create uh, their own uh, style and based on uh, indigenous musical tradition, which they can take from all over the places. Right? For instance, I am, uh, I'm a composer and a musicologist. Uh, I was born and uh, of course grew up in, in Jakarta. Jakarta is the, 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 the capital of Indonesia. So I have like a freedom to take any kind of musical culture uh, from my environment. My no, no, my environment basically is the capital of Indonesian culture. So in Jakarta, you can find all kind of musical expression there from different part of the archipelago. So and uh, this is uh, I'm going to tell you now a little bit about my my work as a composer and a conductor and also ethnomusicologist in in 2010. Uh, I uh, came up with the idea of forming a new orchestra uh, by using indigenous musical instrument from basically uh, all over Indonesia. So I gathered 45 to 45 uh, musicians from across the country with their own instrument, and then uh, I invited them to come to Jakarta, and then we formed an, uh, an orchestra, a new orchestra. This orchestra has never existed before. And uh, I create the music uh, based on many Indonesian in regional musical tradition. But this is my own, what they play is basically my own composition, but rooted in indigenous uh, music uh, culture in Indonesia that has been around for thousands of years. Now, uh, the, the, the orchestra I call Indonesian National Orchestra. So this... This, this is Indonesian National Orchestra, which I found it in 2010, and then I, I, I developed into a new orchestra in the context of Indonesian uh, music culture. Okay, so if you can see, the instrument has different type of instrument. You know, you see drum chimes, uh, which you can, which you can only find in the world two places. Uh, first in Indonesia, not Sumatra, and the other one is in Burma. Okay. Burmese uh, drum chime, and then uh, I have like a big uh, 
what do you call that? Uh, standing xylophone in the back. It's a xylophone, but uh, made of huge bam- bamboo tube. And uh, I, I, I designed that instrument myself, but originally that's from Bali. Okay, and next to it is basically the frame drum. It used to be, you know, playing by hand, but this I, I developed it and I designed it myself and it become like what so-called, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, gong drums. Yeah, like a, in the form like a gong, but basically a drum, like a large drum, basically. Okay, bass drum, to be precise. And, you know, sitting on the floor, uh, you know, as you, as you, maybe you, you realize, we normally don't use chair or anything uh, to play musical instrument. We normally sit on the floor. If we perform, all the musicians in Indonesia, they sit, we sit in the floor or sit on the stage. We never really use chair unless it is, it is really necessary. So that's why I created the orchestra and I used the original form of uh, playing technique, which is sitting on the floor. And I also, as a conductor, I also sit on the floor. Now, uh, in the ver- in the forefront, you see this is what so called gong chimes. Yeah, you already uh, I already show you the picture. They originated uh, around five thousand years BC. Uh, this is old instrument. And on the left hand side here, you see something like curving, very nice shape. That's also uh, originated from eastern part of Indonesia. That's a string instrument. And uh, gong uh, gong chimes also in the back on the left hand side. In the back is gong chime. On the live, on the right hand side, you didn't see, but that two xylophones instrument, I use it. So I combine all this instrument to make an orchestra, which I call Indonesian National Orchestra. Okay. And this is, uh, this is the, the other picture. More close up. These are instrument of my orchestra. Okay. And here I got the opportunity to perform for Quincy Jones. Uh, I don't think I need to explain who Quincy Jones is to you. So he came to Bali. This, uh, this performance was in Bali during uh, ASEAN, ASEAN Summit 2011. And he was uh, my special guest. You know, uh, we perform, of course, for other, other, pe- uh, other uh, people, but uh, Quincy Jones was there. So this is our performance. And he loved it so much. <laughs> he never seen this kind of orchestra before. Okay, now this is a sample, a video sample of my orchestra, the profile. And this is my music. sangat luar biasa mengagumkan very, oleh karena dengan alat-alat tradisional Because yang orang kira tidak bisa dimainkan untuk musik-musik that you, that not many people that people understood bisa, cannot play uh, contemporary music uh, penonton yang It's sudah our, tahu lagu itu you can play classical music there's no uh, prior dari, uh, tradition uh, before no antecedent before to combine all these instruments together into one form of orchestra. Don't forget this is also cross-culture, cross-religion, and also cross-thinking. Very good. Need to be preserved and developed. Kerjasama dengan beberapa teman-teman ini 20 tahunan. Jadi saya sudah tahu betul karakter mereka. Tanpa itu saya pikir tidak akan mungkin.
music from Aceh. I just mentioned to you, this is Rapai Pase from Aceh, Islamic tradition. Jones. Uh, as you see, this is all a uh, range of Indonesian indigenous uh, instrument, and they are be, be playing by all Indonesian masters. Okay, uh, that's my orchestra. Uh, as you see it, you know, I, I, I compose uh, the song. Maybe if you heard it, it's, uh, you know, based on different regional music. And there are, of course, strong influence, you know, from, I mean, music from Islamic, you know, culture and also from, from Chinese culture. So they all like, you know, blend together uh has uh, become Indonesian indigenous music. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, in, in 2016, I formed a smaller ensemble because, you know, orchestra uh, is very costly. You know, we can only perform uh, in certain places and certain occasion because uh, this uh, involves a lot of people and they are basically living across the country as well. They're not from one particular place. They, they It's instrument... Uh, is 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 each player live in their own uh, uh, hometowns, so across the country. So to bring them 
to one place is very costly, especially when we, when we're doing rehearsal for a month or two, then we, we have to pay we have to pay for you know, all accommodation, everything that's gonna cost very expensive, you know, running this orchestra. Uh, for that reason, in 2016, I came up with the idea of forming smaller ensemble uh, with the core uh, musician that live not very far from the central because I used to live in Jakarta. Now I live in Bali. So these are my small ensemble we call Inno Ensemble. Inno is Indonesian National Orchestra. And in this video, you will see how we collaborate with Indonesian uh, top uh, star. Uh, Iwan Fals. Iwan Fals is uh, our like superstar in Indonesian music, pop music scene. And this is a collaboration uh, with him. And we perform, uh, I, I, I do the arrangements for his uh, very famous song called Bongkar. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, almost 45 minutes already. We start at 7:23, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I'm gonna stop here uh, my presentation. So I will open, uh, you know, the floor for question. If you guys want to ask question, you're very welcome. I'm here. So I'm going to return this to our moderator or something. <laughs> you can just ask, you know, whatever you want to ask to me uh, I have right a, away. I have a question about International National Orchestra and right. about the NFT world. Um, do you, Mr. Frank, plan to mint some NFTs and, like, create your own store on the near and like promote your orchestra in the near ecosystem? Is it something which you are planning to do? Wow, that's a very good question. May, could you please mention your name and you're from so I know who, I talk, who I'm talking to? Uh, I'm Paul from, uh, from Poland. Oh, Paul, so, okay. Yeah. okay. You, you are our guy today. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you, that's very, very important, very interesting question. Well, I'm, I, I'm thinking about that, you know, I've been talking to Wizo about that because, but I don't know much about that right now, about NFT, you know, I've been hearing a lot about that, but I need to learn more in order to do it. I would definitely would love to, I mean, would definitely love to do it uh, in the future, you know, uh, as soon as, as soon as I know uh, how to do and what is the nature of NFT, you know, uh, I mean, how can how can mft work for music something like that that's the thing that i need to learn more about that thank you so much for your question paul yes yeah. definitely i would love to do it but i don't know how now <laughs> uh, but, but, but don't worry we, we all are actually struggling how to actually take music nfts on another level because it's all really right. new place and it's really fresh so, so we are at the beginning mm. to be honest uh, but okay in, yeah it also, I, what I was actually wondering, because uh, we have a feature as selling uh, tickets 
to the concert oh. as uh, NFTs, and that yeah. also oh. is something something which came up uh, in this space like a few months ago. And yeah, it's also something something interesting. Okay. So yeah, and also, is it possible, for example, to stream concerts from uh, Indonesian national orchestra into the metaverse, like uh, via via Twitch oh, to okay. metaverse land? Something like something like we have today. However, um, okay. we can meet up on the near hub mm. or in the other metaverse land where you know it will be <laughs> it will be excellent. digital <laughs> excellent well i'm very open i would love to collaborate with you guys if you know how to do it you know thank you so much uh, i would love to see the potential of doing that uh, for music you know especially yeah that would be nice yeah thank you so much paul for mentioning that idea let's see hopefully we can talk through weasel later on about these possibilities right Thank you. Sure. Right. Definitely. definitely. Okay. Thank you too. Yeah. Any other question or suggestion or comment? Very welcome to give comment anything, you know. Don't don't have to ask question always, you know. Any comment would be appreciate. You know, or sharing, you know, what ideas you have over there. Um, or maybe if you want to, yeah. Dr. Ahead. Frank, I, I don't have a question, but I just want to say I enjoyed the presentation and I love the music that was um displayed. It was really awesome to see. Thanks for sharing. Oh, thank you. You, you must be from Nigeria. I yeah, think. I am from Nigeria. Okay, I can tell from your accent. That's very nice <laughs> because I have a lot of friends from Nigeria here. Wow, wow. wow <laughs> you, guys, you guys speak? You guys speak French over there, right? Not not um, English and French. No? No, just no? English. Oh, English. Yeah, just English. Just oh, English. Okay. Yeah, All English. Right. Uh, Senegal, yeah. yeah. What, what's your name again? My name is um, SK. SK. <laughs> SK. All right. Thank you, SK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I hope yeah. you can come see our concert live. You know, Indonesia, we, we are, we are, we, we have a, we have a plan, but it's already uh, decided to to perform in in Europe. We will do European tour this October oh. with this orchestra. Yeah, I hope. Oh. Well, if Absolutely. you are around, yeah, if you are in Europe, or maybe you can come to Europe from <laughs> from Nigeria. Who knows? We will be performing in Germany, <laughs> Brazil, and maybe maybe Italy, and maybe Italy too. You know, uh, Austria, little tour, yes. little European tour. In October, basically October seventeen. Thank you. Oh, that 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 would be amazing. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe from Nigeria oh, wow. to uh, to Europe, not really that far, right? Um, I've I've never traveled out of the country, so I don't really know. <laughs> okay, all right then, no problem. Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you, thank you again, Nessie. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? No, so, yeah, I just, just want to add that that was really fantastic and enlightening about Indonesian music. I mean, if, mm -hmm. hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I hope this will yeah, that... persuade you to come to Indonesia yourself someday or come to Bali to visit me. I'm here in Bali, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the future yeah. is near. That's, the future is near. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Any other question, comment? Hello, greetings. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can hear you, but very uh, soft. Greetings. Ah, here. Okay, ah, this is better. Okay, this is better. Yeah, I must say I really enjoyed the um, um the session it was really okay. um, entertaining and very educating I, I think this is my first time of actually seeing an Ind indonesian orchestra and mm. i must say that my first experience is awesome like i even had to go and um, try to bring in people to come and see because it's, <laughs> it's really beautiful like you know as an artist I always go beyond just listening to music. I always mm. ask myself, how do people come 
how how do people imagine things like this like music is art yes but where does this come yes. from like where where mm. does this creativity come from like a lot of mm. people playing local instrument and making mm. awesome um um sound and you know it's yeah. really beautiful yeah. and i must say that it's it's really lovely i i enjoyed every bit of it and Thanks. I, I i i must say welcome to the web3 space there are a lot of opportunities and i, and I know that it's going to really mm. be an awesome journey for you guys because um, mm. i can I, I have already started imagining the kind of um things that you know this can bring and i love it mm. it just brings out this indonesian um culture and um name to the uh, um, world of web3 and it's really beautiful hmm. yeah thank you very much thank you so me. much and you're, you're from nigeria also yeah i'm el kush i'm an afro infusion musical artist and um okay you, an you're an artist you said yeah. wow yeah thank you so much you appreciate so much. it hopefully someday i will be able to see your work right i love yeah. you know african art you know so much Yeah. Especially the contemporary one. I saw when I went to Europe I had a chance sometime to see Europeans, you know, art, you know. I mean I mean uh, African art, you know, contemporary art, you know, in the museum. So, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I hope you guys are able to come to Bali someday, right? <laughs> Most definitely, you know, in this web three space, um, nothing is impossible. So I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Hello. Yes. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you yeah, for the can hear you. beautiful presentation. <laughs> thank you for the beautiful presentation. I really learned a lot. Thank you. Uh, my name is Teddy. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, I believe oh, okay. I played uh, in right. your events. Oh. I played one in Toraja International Festival once and Kalam Fest, if you remember. Yeah. And uh, what what music? What, which group? What group? Which group? Uh, I am. Yeah, I run Toraja International name, Festival. My stage name. Yeah, my name is DJ Tizi, and I played with Liquid Silver there. Oh, okay. All right. There you go. For sure. I remember you well. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, forward. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember. I, I do. I, I do have one question though. I mean, uh, I am sure. right now, uh, like, I'm more exploring into a traditional uh, instrument, but... Is okay. there any place in Jakarta that I can access a traditional instrument and I can record it to use in my music? I mean, uh, where can I learn? Yeah, maybe. In Jakarta. Uh, no, uh, many. There are many. Like Jakarta is the place where you can see, where can you find almost all the traditional musician. But of course, they are, you know, they are staying in their own place. You know, we we. It's not easy to find them, but they are there. But if I only know where to find, like for instance, the Betawi, the indigenous Jakarta musician, yeah. So because uh, they, they they play with me, so uh, as you notice, uh, they play frame drum rebana with me. So I, I can easily find them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I know where they live, but uh, other musician, yeah, I know. And you know, in in my you know ensemble, the small ensemble. There, there are musician from West Sumatra. Yeah, that I know where to find him. Uh, he plays. He played uh, Dijiridu also. Play Sarunai. And uh, no, the other musician come actually from uh, West Java, from Bandung, from Kuningan. In my ensemble, not all of them live in Jakarta. So a uh, few of them, but there are many. Uh, uh, the best way to find it, I, I guess, you have to ask uh, the the communities like. The Batak communities, for instance, just go find your friend, uh, the Batak friend, and they can tell you because normally those musicians play in the wedding. You know, they they normally play in their uh, in the you know in the wedding uh, occasion. So when you go to like uh, the Bataknis wedding, they normally have a Bataknis music, the same like that. So all those musicians, the traditional musician, normally their gig. Uh, 
in the wedding, you know, of their own uh, uh, ethnic group. So that's the best way to find it. <laughs> But uh, indeed, Jakarta is so big, as you know, so huge. It's it's hard to find it. But they're all there for sure. Yeah, good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank what's, you. Your, what's your name again? I forgot. Uh, my name is Teddy. Teddy, Teddy okay, Ted. Uh-uh. Well, you, if you still have my number, we can talk about it later. Okay, uh, I will ask for uh, from Wizo then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you, Om. Thank you. Right. Thank you, thank you, Teddy. Thank you. Okay, great. Anyone else? So, if there is no more question, I guess we should end it here. Paul, will you take care? Yes, yes, I take care. So, just to sum it up and just uh, recap, thank you, yeah. Mr. Frankie, for, for your time. Thank you for wonderful yeah. session. Thank you all for the guests and for the participation. And yes, guys, thank you all. So, uh, with the room, stay active in the chat and yeah, stay creative. So, thank you guys all. And okay. Bye. Thank you. Wait, wait, Bye. Wait, wait. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. bye bye. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Hope to see you uh, in the in the, you know in life. Okay. All right then. Bye. 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 Bye.